praying. I keep hearing verses in my spirit about end time dispensation. I keep hearing in the last things. I keep hearing, keep ringing in my ear. Not to the place where I know it's time for us to look towards the sky and, and get ready to hear a trumpet, but but reminds me to keep my focus. On the cross. My focus on the kingdom of God, yeah. not the kingdom of this world, because we can easily lose our focus. Am I right about it? Yeah, you you want to be honest with me today, yeah, right talk to me and let me know, yeah, you, you, you can see yourself losing focus yeah, you easily today. That's right. We come to encourage you with a word uh, as directed by the scriptures in Hebrews chapter 10, but we go on to Genesis. But Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, but encourage one another all the more. So as you see the day approaching, and I see the day approaching. Yeah. Well, time is running out. I want to encourage you all the more to keep a right perspective of life. Thank you, Jesus. Keep a right kingdom perspective of life. Life, the Bible talks about life is more than what you wear, what you and what you drink and where you work and, and we can get so wrapped up in the mundane right. just doing life and lose our focus on God Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 if you got to say amen. amen and the word of the Lord reads now the whole world had one language and a common speech as the people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. Uh -huh. They said to each other, come, come. let us make bricks and uh -huh. bake them thoroughly. Yeah. They used bricks instead of stone and tar for mortar. Uh -huh. Then they said, come, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. Verse 5. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. And verse 6 says, the Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they had begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Yeah. Said, come, come, let us go down and confuse their language yeah. so they will not understand each other. So the Lord, watch this, uh -huh. scattered them yeah. from, there over, uh, from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babylon. Because there, the Lord confused the language yes, of the whole world. whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. And God's word is blessed. You, Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence that we already experienced this morning. But God, as we settle in to hear a word from you, we ask God that you open up our spiritual ears, open up our understanding, and the word that is sown on today, let it take root into good fertile ground. Father, I pray that you use me as a vessel. God, I'm nothing but a bumbling fool, but you can turn me into a vessel of honor. Give me clarity of thought, clarity of speech, and the words that I may speak. God, let them forget it by the time they hit the door. But the word that you speak, God, yeah. let it be etched in their hearts and in their minds yeah. forever. That you may get increase, that you may get the glory. Yes, God. It's in your holy and precious name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. 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 This morning, I want to speak to you from the text, a message titled, Building Your Brand Versus God's Brand. Oh, Building Your Brand Versus God's Brand. I had a good time studying this text and the story of the Tower of Babel is widely known. Raise your hand if you know about this story. This story is known throughout the church and even outside of the church. It's the first story that describes the community's mindset after
after the events of the flood. Uh -huh. Ironically, it closely resembles the mindset of many people today on, in many communities. Bland, we know, is a term that has become familiar today. Am I right about it? Yeah, you that in years past, the younger generation, when you talk about building a brand, understands exactly what you're talking about. Why us older people, the more mature crew, we wonder what does that really mean? It's a term that we are familiar with. Uh, we are only familiar with when you say the trademark. Brand and trademark is the same thing. Brand really started all as something that would identify a product or a service, but has since matriculated to where people can have a brand individually. For instance, I'm going to help you here. Trump, do you know that Trump name is a brand? Whereas though Trump, your president, turn and say your president, your president, his name is a brand where he is able to sell his name to organizations uh, that will pay large sums of money just to use his name. Amen. There are so many uh, hotels that brand that uh, varnish his name, but he doesn't have anything to do with it except the use of his name. Come on, preacher. Today. Brand identifies who you are, uh -huh. what you have to offer, yeah. and how valuable you are, valuable you are, mm -hmm. and what makes you better than other uh, than other those that are similar to you. Brand represents your values, it represents your beliefs, and represents what you hold important. And many businesses and people are constantly keeping their brand on the forefront of their mind to make sure that they stay in ahead of the competition. Yeah. They conduct their lives in such a way as to protect their brand. You know, uh, you hear about uh, uh, the Kardashians, they have a brand, and, and, and different businesses and organizations have a brand. You have all this stuff, but for the most part, they are building a brand to look good. Yeah. Come on, they are building a brand to secure monetary momentum. They want to succeed and excel and have plenty of money in their pocket. Somebody say money in the pocket. In the pocket. There's nothing wrong with money in the pocket as long as you got a good purpose for that money in your pocket. Amen. Turn your neighbor and say, all the money God give you ain't for you. Amen. It's for me. Tell them you can bless me right now. Amen. I'm going to help you be used by the Lord. And today we want to uh, 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 to warn you of the pull. Somebody say pull. A pull to be engulfed with building your brand versus God's brand. You cannot afford to underestimate that there is a prophetic word in the atmosphere, in the earth realm that will pull you. That will pull you the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, For people will love only themselves and their money. Amen. Does anybody know that scripture? Yeah. It talks about what's going to happen in the last days. And I see people being pulled into that area where they're prideful, they're boastful, and they're concerned about their fool and no more. My God, help them. says they will be proud and boastful. In other words, they will be concerned more about their brand than the things of God. The text describes a people who got caught up. They got caught up in building their brand. They forgot about uh, uh, building God's. Amen. The Bible gives us stark warning about getting caught up in pursuit of our own success and forgetting about the will of God. And it's so, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and I want you to hear me, that somehow you have to uh, you have to always step back and regain your focus in your life. Amen. If I ask you uh, uh, to be honest, you would probably say that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week, you probably did the same thing. Come on, preacher. Got up, brushed your teeth, hopefully, took a shower, went to work. Had lunch, came home, Come on. ate dinner, fellowship with your family, went to bed, and did the same thing. 
over and over. One week can turn into two. Two weeks turn into a month. One month turn into six. And before you know it, a year has went by and you really haven't done anything. But the text describes the people who got caught up. And I can see where uh, individuals are now today getting caught up and building their own brain. It was ironic that on the heels, on the heels of the story of Noah, we know the story of Noah. How many raise your hand? I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I know I'm bothering some of y'all, but I'm just trying to make sure you stay awake. The <laughs> story of Noah, know that God was so fed up with what was going on in the earth that he said, I need to clean the whole house. And he caused it to rain 40 days and 40 nights. So you know the story. And he cleansed the whole earth. And he said, I need to start off. Start off all over with a man named Noah. His sons and his daughters. And the story lets us know that it was a man by the name of Nimrod. Somebody say Nimrod. A man named Nimrod uh, who was... Uh, the great grandson of Noah verse 10 and 10 says that Babel was the beginning of his kingdom wow. God Almighty yeah. he was a hunter he was a builder God had gifted him to have great abilities but he decided to use those abilities to build his kingdom oh and not the kingdom of God his name, some of us older people understand his name, Nimrod, is synonymous with what? The title of a fool. You ever heard somebody say, you're a Nimrod? That really was talking about somebody being a fool. In verse 11 of our scripture text, the King James Version said that they got together and they said, let us build us a city and a tower and let us Make us a name. Least we would be scattered. In other words, they were saying, let us build a brand. Let us build a name for ourselves. Let us build security. Let us uh, uh, let everybody know how great we are. Let us uh, uh, build this city, this tower, so that we can show to everybody that we have the power. Some of you, some of you can even, even realize how this, this earth realm is so built on building your own empire, your own kingdom. Some of y'all like that movie, what is called Power, the TV show. I got to see power. I got to see empire. I got to see all these shows that dictate people are just trying. American Idol is building what? A name and a brand for yourself. We got to realize that God does not want us to, to have a mindset where we're only concerned about what we can do for us. First number point, point I have this morning is, do you talk more about your goals than you talk about God's goals for you? Let us do us. Let us do this. Let us do that. Is all your conversations about what you are doing instead of, let me tell you what God wants me to do. When you're at home, when you're talking with your spouse, when you are riding in your car, are you thinking about how you can increase or are you thinking about what God really has birthed you to do? Yeah. Get your focus back. Get your focus back. First of all, it was God's plan for the lives, watch this, for them to replenish the earth. He had made a covenant with Noah, not just Noah, but Noah and his three sons. In Genesis chapter 9 and 1, the word says that God blessed Noah and his sons and made a covenant with them to be fruitful and to multiply and replenish the earth. So here you have the grandson of Noah saying, okay, I understand what God wants from me, but what I am going to do, I'm going to stay right here. I'm not moving no further. I'm not replenishing the earth. I'm going to build me a tower and me a name so everybody can see who I am. It's something that you have to watch when you get the eyes. 
Did you see? And we are, listen, we are in a, a, a zone and, and a culture that loves the eyes. Yeah. Talking about I can prove it to you that if you just give me some time to scroll through your Facebook page. Come on, come on, come on, preacher. I will know if you about the eyes. Uh, Everything uh, is a uh, picture of you. Uh, 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 see me doing this. See me doing that. The Lord see you. what I got. See how I look. And you get upset when you don't get enough likes. Or how good you look. Look how many likes. Who cares how many likes you got? I want to know do God like you. If you got tw uh, 20 million hits and God will never push like on your page, something's wrong. Is your conversation more about your goals than about God's goals for your life? Are you building your brand or are you building God's? When your plan is contrary to God's plan, you're building your own brand. Your own brand. Text said, lest we be scattered. Wait a minute. God says, we the to earth. That means be scattered. Move on. Don't don't build up a house right here. Uh -huh. Keep on having babies and kids and replenish the earth. Because that's the only reason I let you stay alive. Uh -huh. The only reason God allowed the grand the sons of Noah to give birth was to what? Replenish the earth. So here you have Nimrod. Nimrod means you're a fool. Nimrod said, I'm not doing that, but I'm going to stay right here. And I'm going to build me a tower that reaches toward the heaven that I may be like the gods. Point number two. God will not, he will not ignore your obedience, disobedience. Verse four, uh, verse five and seven says, God said, let us, let us know that God will not sit idly by while you continue just to do you. Good God Almighty. We know that the word says that he came down, saw what they was doing, and then said, okay, I got something for you. Since you want to be, uh, uh, you want to just do you, I'm going to confuse your language. He confused the language. And I don't know who this is for, but the Lord wanted me to tell you, but you thought God was going to allow you to continue to do you. You thought that God was going to allow you to go on with business as usual, but he is so, watch this, he is so concerned about the completion of your call that he is about to step in and confuse your life. Jesus. In other words, people who used to partner with you, people who used to understand and want to follow you, people who used to link up with you and help them get, get the job done, they're going to get to a place where they don't even understand what you're talking about. And then you will no longer be understood and your projects and your ventures will fail. I don't know who that's for, but the Lord will me say that the business plan that you once worked on that worked will no longer be productive. If you don't shift your thinking and stop being focused on building your brand, and make sure you're building God's. There was a word that came through here that there was a way that there was a way that was coming through that was going to help us prosper. But the key to that word was if you see first the kingdom of God. In other words, you put his brand before your brand, then your brand is still going to prosper. I hope you didn't miss that. You got to realize that there is an air of selfishness, a selfish ambition in us. Those who want to build their own bread. We are a selfish people. Yes, we are. Tell your neighbor, say you selfish. Yes, we are. It's part of our sin nature. You selfish. You spend more time in the mirror. You selfish. You spend more time picking out your clothes. You selfish. Come on, But there's an awful, that's also a prophetic word that says in the last days, people will be lovers. Of themselves you talking, right? more than lovers of God. The question is, is that prophetic word pulling you? Come on, come on. 
if you step back and look at your life, is 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 ninety percent of the things that you about that that you do is about you? Come on, let the Lord use you. Baby, you got caught up. We're always looking for the approval of people. One of our greatest sins is in our problems that we have is the love of human praise. We love for people to pass on the back. We love for people to speak well of us. We love to look good in the eyes of people. People will say, look how well I can preach. Look how great I can teach. Look how well I can dress. Look how well I play the instruments. Look. How well I can dance, see, you know, but people love to see you, see, uh, uh, want people to see when they shout real good. Right, right. Is there anything different? Why do people run from the back to shout up front? Is the shout the same in the back that it is up front? Is there a difference up here? Come on, preacher, come on. Come on, preacher, come on. I wonder that. Can you shout in that? If you got enough room, can or is it that you want to be seen? Come on, preacher. You in the house. Look how good I don't shout because I got an ugly shout. Come on, that's all right. I got a shout while I fell on my head one time. Say it. You make a good My feet, my then you know that brother name can't get right. You know it comes. That's all right. Make a job. The Spirit of the Lord has to be on me mightily. That's all right. Let him use it. Make a job for you. Look how well I can shout. Look how well I can sing. I always tell people who preach and people who minister music, be careful that you can get so wrapped up and want to do runs where people are fascinated by how well you sing versus what you're singing about. How often have you seen people singing and they begin to do certain runs, and you stand there and you look at them talking about, go ahead, go ahead. But you ain't even thinking about God. Right. Or you see it, preachers preaching uh, so articulate and they flowing so well that you get enamored about how they are preaching when you forget about the words that they are saying. My Lord, that's it. Help us, Jesus. Help us. So easy to get caught up. We're concerned about how many likes we get, how many views we get on our videos on Facebook. The same people, they wanted to build a name for themselves. They wanted the praises of the people. They wanted recognition. They wanted notoriety. They wanted to be in the in crowd. They wanted others to know their name. God, let us know right away. This is not what I called you to. I didn't call you to build this great tower. I didn't call you, call you to make a name for yourself. I called you to make my name great. Watch this. When you get caught up in making your name great, you are operating outside of biblical principles. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, is a proof. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, is a proof. He said to Abraham, will make you into a great nation. God says, I will make your name great. When you are about building God's brand, he will make your name great. So here it was in, uh, uh, in, the, in the Tower of Babel, Nimrod was trying to make a great name for himself. But the, in, in the next chapter, God gives us the right plan. How will make your name great when you do what I told you to do? Amen. There you go. Yeah. God Almighty, are you building your brand on God's brand? See the difference? Amen. God is the one that makes our name great. You cannot be uh, called primarily just to build a name for yourself. You call to lift up his name. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 says, Your gifts will make room for you and bring you before great men. Are you using all your gifts to make you great? Are you using all your gifts, your gifts to make your name popular? Abraham, watch this, had no idea that his name would be the standard for all God's people. That's what happens when you get focused on building God's kingdom and making his brand known. 
that Abraham's name is now the standard in the mouths of every Christian believer. That he is the standard for what? Faith. Faith. And trust in God. Trust it. But because God made his name, his name is now known all across the world. Yeah. Bird number point number three. To all of you who are pursuing greatness. Point number three, let God make your name great. Yeah. Let God make your name great. Yeah. They say, let us make a, a name for ourselves, but the name they end up having was Babel. Yeah. They started off trying to make a great name. The name they came up that they end up leaving with was confused, <laughs> disconnected. That's right. The greatest affront against God in building your brain over his is that your brain is just for you. That's the greatest, watch this, the greatest affront against God. When you building your brain, you know you're on the wrong track. When all your brain is about is blessing you. His brain is for you, is not for you, is just, it's not just for you, but it's for someone else. I found out, watch this when I was studying. Last night, that chapter 11, that Shem, somebody say Shem, yeah. was one of the sons of Noah. He was still alive, well into Abraham's life. You think a lot of these, so many generations had passed by when Abraham came on board. But I found out that Shem, the grand, the son of Noah, was still alive when Abraham was on the scene. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that the stories had really uh, uh, came from generation to generation of why God had uh, 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 flooded the whole earth. But some way, some shape and form, people will do right for just a short period. And then they will go right back where they started from, which caused God to be so upset when he wanted to start all over. After, after the one of the greatest stories, after the Tower of Babel is what we know about Sodom and Gomorrah, and there is great a uh, uh, parallel with Sodom and Gomorrah and the flood. There's a lot of parallel, but I found out uh, uh, that the descendants of Ham, Noah's son, populated Sodom and Gomorrah. I also learned that God did not solely destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sexual immorality. Most of us, when we hear Sodom and Gomorrah, we think that, that he destroyed them because they were just nasty. Yeah. <laughs> they were nasty, 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 nasty down over there. You know these cities like that? <laughs> Everybody, the most majority of the people was just nasty. But I found out that that wasn't the real, real reason that he destroyed Sodom. Watch this. Somebody get... I'm gonna, I want you to write this down. This is in the word Ezekiel chapter 16. You turn to it if you have it. Ezekiel chapter 16. It's so important that you get it. We're still talking about building your brand. And why God hates for us to lose focus and when we just build our own house and forget about His. We all know about how He called fire. And brimstone down on Sodom. Most of us, when we hear it, we think it's because they're sexual, their sexual immorality. But Ezekiel chapter 16 lets us know that there was something else going on in Sodom that was really caused God to destroy a city. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49 says, And the Lord was speaking to Israel, He was speaking to Israel. Through the prophet Ezekiel, and he said this. He said, Behold, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. Listen, listen. Pride. Right. Fullness of bread. Uh -huh. Fullness of bread means they had what? Plenty of money. Plenty of money. They had all the bread. You know, we talk about you got some bread. Yeah, bread. They had fullness of bread. They had all the money. They had what's this? It says, an abundance of idleness. In other words, they had time. Uh -huh. They had time to do whatever they needed to do simply because, well, listen, when you got plenty of money, you got plenty of time. Right, right, right. When you got money, the, 
that's the problem. A lot of people who have too much money, they got too much time. They don't know what to do with it. But here it says, watch this, Sodom had pride, fullness of bread, plenty of money, and abundance of idleness. They had plenty of time, watch this, was in her and in her doors. Neither did she strengthen the head of the poor and needy. But God Almighty. The main reason that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah was not because their sexual immorality, it's because they had money and they wouldn't help in God's people. Woo. They had the money, but they wasn't. It was all about what they would do for themselves. You got to stay focused and not be in a place where you you got the bread because you built your brand. But the only reason God will bless you is what? To be a blessing to somebody else. In other words, Sodom was about Sodom. They had fullness of bread, plenty of money. Uh, they had plenty of time on their hand, but they did not use that blessings from God to take care of the needy and the poor. My last point, don't press toward prosperity for your own reward. Don't press towards prosperity for your own reward. If you are pressing to make money so you can be a blessing to somebody else, God will be with you. Yes, okay. will. But if you are just making sure that you have fullness of bread so yet your, all your pills are met and that all your needs are taken care of, God will conceive, consider you in the category of Sodom and Gomorrah. Good God. Help preach. Help preach. Help preach. Help preach. Help preach. Help preach. Turn in and say, get your focus back. God told Abraham, I will bless you to make you a blessing. The Lord, the Lord, could, God, my, my, look at my voice. The Lord wants to bless you. But he only wants to do it so that you can be a blessing to others. Some of us will get to the place when God gives you increase and you spend it on you. Jesus, mm. help us, Lord. Yeah. I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings. That last increase, that last promotion you got, what you do with that extra? Did you bless somebody in your family? You know, over on IP and them is struggling to pay the electric bill, but you got a promotion. You say, oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to get that pocketbook. I'm going to buy that car. Now I can afford this amount of money a month. I'm going to get that watch I've been looking at. Got family members that you know are struggling. Bible talks about who is it when we shut up our, our bowels of compassion when we have it. You are neglecting the whole faith. Don't get to the place you know over here, the LTM, you call it what? Corbin. When you say you tell grandma, I would help you pay that bill, but I got to pay my tithes. Woo! I got to bring it to the house of God. And you let your family members, members' lights get shut off because you bring it to God. Uh oh, that quiet up in here. God, if you want to search it, Jesus calls that Corbin. Corbin. You don't want to do that. I just wanted to leave you with a message today that would encourage you to play softly. I'm done. Get your focus back. Thank you, Jesus. Get your focus back. Time has a way of snatching your life away. Yes, it is. Days turning to weeks, weeks turning to months, months turning to years. And you realize all those promises that you told God, if you get me out, I'm going to do this. If you see me through this storm, I'm going to serve you. But just like the people in the time of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah, once you got out, you went to building your own brain. question was, point one this morning, do you talk more about your goals? That's how you know that you all sing. 
do you talk more about your goals than God's goals for you? Number two, God will not ignore your outright disobedience. He is full of mercy and full of grace. But when he has called you to something, it's his, his call was to fill and replenish the earth. But when you decide, I'm not doing that, God has to step in. Amen. Jesus. And he'll cause what you are doing to fail just so you can stop doing what he called you to do, he'll do it. That's right. Don't let him come down and have to confuse your language. Amen. Number three, let God make you a name. Yes. Yes. Build his brand first. That's it. And he will. Yes. He has a way of making your name great. Amen. He has a way of opening doors that no man can shut. He has a way of putting you before people yes. and in jobs that your resume would have never got yes. you there. But your education would have never got you there. Yes. Amen. Let him make your name great. Yes, and he's able to do it. Yes, yes. Last point, don't press towards prosperity just for your own reward. You don't think any, remember anything. God was upset with Sodom and Gomorrah because they didn't take care of the poor and needy. So much to the point. And some of you remember the scripture where it says that God said, the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah has reached me. The scripture text says the reason God reacted because he said the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah has reached me. What was that cry? That was the cry from the poor. That was the cry from the need. That was the cry from somebody who needed help. But there was people who were walking right by them. It was that cry that reached the ears of God. He said, I have got to come down and destroy the city because they won't do what I called them to do. They won't do. I put bread in the head so that there wouldn't be nobody hungry around them. This is good. Everybody standing. You have heard me, most people here have heard me say it so many times. Beware of the prophetic pull to disobey God. Those scriptures where it says, in the last days, many will do X, Y, and Z. It's a prophetic word that will come to pass. The question is, is that pulling you? Are you just so busy with life and not recognizing that that word is pulling you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Grab your neighbor by the hand.